Good morning, everyone. Let's try it again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all for joining us to this milestone event in the history of Fresno City College and the city of Fresno. Over the course of the last 110 years, we've not seen anything quite like what we're seeing today. This groundbreaking event celebrates the historic and long-awaited West Fresno project that will transform the lives of this city for many, many decades to come. We're so proud and we have so many people to thank, but before we thank anyone, we need to be in gratitude and blessing. So it's my distinct honor to invite Pastor Lewis from the Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church for a special invocation. Pastor Lewis. to everyone this morning. Aristotle said the, uh, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. And today, this is a sweet day, not only in our city, but in this community of which I've been a part for 40 years. So in my Christian tradition, let me lead you in prayer today and thank God for where we have come and how far we have come. So God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for your mercy and for your grace. God, scripture encourages us to seek instruction with our heart and words of wisdom, God. And so God, we call on you now to bless this occasion. God, we thank you for all of the administrators we've, that have led uh, this effort to make this occasion possible and to make this vision come to fruition. God, we thank you for Dr. Parnell. We thank you, God, for Dr. Goldsmith. We thank you, God, for Trustee Payne, those, those that have led this fight, God, to make this happen on today. We thank you, God, for our investors, all of the various groups that have invested and labored together to make this day possible in our community. And God, we see this as, uh, as a time when the dust of West Fresno will be turned into deliverance for so many of our children. So God, thank you for this, 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 this uh, uh, campus. Thank you, God, for this occasion. God, we pray your blessings on everyone in this place every dignitary, every officer, every person uh, uh, here under the sound of my voice who serves our community so well. God, we pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. It is now my uh, distinct pleasure to introduce our newest associate government president, Yatsari Victoria. She will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yatsari? Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to thank all the voters for believing in students. Being born and raised in Fresno and having such a short commute from here, I am extremely grateful for the difference we will make in this community. Thank you to the Board of Education and everybody viewing from home for believing in me and in all students. Thank you. Thank you, Yat. Sorry. Let's give her another round of applause. You know, uh, Yat. Sorry, you are leading our students, and you're the reason why we're here because we believe in students. And, uh, we're really proud of what they do and we believe in what they're capable of doing. 
and today demonstrates that good, good occurs when communities and public institutions and government and the students work together. In fact, this project is a shining example of collaboration for the common good. On behalf of the students, the faculty, staff and administration of Fresno City College, we are all grateful for you who have come together in person and virtually and especially to all the voters who approved our Measure C bond. This milestone event, this groundbreaking event on this $86.5 million facility will help us better serve our community in their academic and career goals. This site will be a catalyst responsible for future growth of our region. Once completed, it'll feature approximately 110,000 square feet. That will include experiential classrooms and offices supported by advanced technological infrastructure. This campus will fuse career technical education with general education and our learning spaces will become incubators for future jobs in our city and our state and dare I say our nation. Our students will come from Edison, from Washington Union, from Kerman, from Central, from Fresno Unified, from Gaston and the entire valley. They will come here and they will study to become our future leaders. In addition, this campus has ample space to grow and has been designed specifically with the environment in mind. It will foster a synergy between students, faculty, and the businesses we serve and the community in which we live. At a time when all eyes are looking towards our healthcare system for assistance, we are proud that our efforts here at this campus, we're proud that our faculty and staff have created a new program for transfer in public health that will be offered here. Similarly, our, our faculty have answered the call to help educate our students and community about the importance of our history and our culture. And with a new focus on ethnic studies in the K-12 schools and the universities, we will be offering classes in Native American studies, African American studies, Asian studies, Chicano Latino studies here. Our students will be able to earn an associate degree for social justice here. We are so excited about the possibilities of this new campus that offers our students and our community. I have to say our future is definitely bright. And while we're looking forward today, we must also acknowledge how we got here. The West Fresno campus is built on a legacy of advocacy that started several generations ago in a response to policies that left this community, West Fresno, behind. So how did the West Fresno campus come to be? Well, a 2017 Southwest Fresno specific plan provides a little glimpse into the origin story of Fresno City College West Campus. That plan and this community has a rich history and culture that many residents have said and shared and echo that they have deep ties to this community and they're proud to call the Southwest Fresno their home. For many years, the Southwest Fresno community has been overlooked as a neighborhood suitable for high quality development. The residents have long advocated for considerable and consideration in citywide development in the implementation of improvements that will preserve the community's assets and enhance this community's image and quality for decades to come. It is this community that has come together on numerous occasions to plan and to advocate for development and redevelopment. In fact, in 1969, the Southwest General Neighborhood Renewal Development Plan came to be and it was adopted focusing on economic conditions needed for growth. In 1977, the Edison Community Plan was adopted by the Fresno City Council. Some of you may think, well, that's an old plan. It doesn't have much prevalence today. You'd be wrong. That plan echoes three objectives that really are being materialized today. Public and private investment, economic development, and education. There were other plans that may not have been formally adopted, but that reflect the desires of this community. And it's important that you hear that again, this community, this neighborhood. In 2003, there were about 300 community residents that participated in a charrette to create a shared vision that resulted in the West Fresno Community Vision Plan. 
Not to be outdone, the California Avenue neighborhood plan was also developed with help from the Fresno Housing Authority and it focused again on private and public development, focused again on education and development that made sense for pedestrians and our residents. Then in 2009, the city of Fresno, the West Fresno Coalition for the Economic Development and the California Endowment worked together to create an asset map and look at creating a five-year plan. And they created a list of 20 actions. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read all 20 of them right now. But it's important to know the school behind me, Gaston, that was came out of that plan. Promoting faith-based and social partnership came out of that plan and was recognized in that plan. And of course, the new health care facility at Gaston with Clinical Sierra came out of that plan. These plans matter because we built upon them. And of course, the 2017 Southwest Specific Plan, co-created by so many of you here today. In fact, if you look at that plan, not only does it provide a history, but it provides a roadmap of how we got here today. So it was the community's determination and their passion that have fueled incremental change in previous planning efforts which have ultimately led us here to a monumentous event. And that's why I wanna start with acknowledging our community members. And while I love our legislators and our elected people, but this is really about our community and our people. So the to community partners who've worked for several years, you are truly the foundation that has made this dream a reality. And I would like on behalf of the college to express our deepest gratitude to Mary Curry and her family. You're a true community, yeah. Mary Curry and her entire family are really a community treasure. And they've been strong advocates for children's and families and the environment and what's right for West Fresno and what's right for our entire community. I wanna thank you again. Special thanks to other community members who advocated tirelessly alongside her are Debbie Darbin, Robert Mitchell, Margaret Rocha, Esther Cuevas. Go ahead, you can, yes. Ashley Warner, Pao Yang, Tate Hill, Brian King, Steve Halls, Alexander, or excuse me, Alex Ballinger, and the pastors Binion, Kreiner, and of course B.T. Lewis who gave the invocation today. And there are so many other, yes, please. <laughs> Community leaders, leaders of faith have come together and there are so many others that I wanna thank, but time kind of doesn't allow me to do that. In terms of our community leaders, the next gentlemen are not only successful businessmen that our students can look to as role models, but they also demonstrate a servant's heart. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna give a warm applause to our generous landowners. So when I call your name, could you please stand? Mr. Terrence Frazier. <laughs> Mr. Frazier started this whole donation off in terms of it was your vision along with Oliver Baines and Steve Halls who saw this area as a new campus. Your donation was the first taken to the State Center Community College Board for approval. And then closely followed by the Shahadi family. Mr. The Shahadi family, could you please stand? John Shahadi, Steve Shahadi, Jim Shahadi, and Tim Shahadi. Along with Mr. Sylvester Hall, are you here? Could you please stand? Mr. Hall, for years you've planned this area to be developed along with so many others. It is these gentlemen who stand before you now. It is their generosity. So now we can construct a campus on a much larger footprint than we ever imagined. This campus, yes. This campus will change lives for decades to come and thank you on behalf of the students and faculty of Fresno City College our community will have better lives because of your vision and your generosity. Thank you. Our community and leaders, uh, excuse me, our community and leaders in the community also persuaded the state that we needed um, a solution here in Fresno and that the need in Fresno was so great and the solution was so compelling that it, that it justified advancements and investments in this campus and in this community. 
So for a brief moment, I'd like to thank our many governmental partners, starting off with our gratitude to Governor Newsom and the State Growth State Strategic Growth Council for their efforts through the Transformational Climate Change Community Program that provided $16.5 million. Thanks to the efforts, 16.5, that deserves a little applause, absolutely. And that $16.5 million to this project is in due large parts to many of our elected officials here today, but I'd like to give a special shout out to former council member Oliver Baines and former mayor Ashley Swearingen and to Eric Payne and to all of our state center community college board of trustees and the bond oversight. I believe Mike McNally's here as well. Thank you for being here. Also, our city and county partners came along the, alongside us to help us with this community. I wanna thank the city of Fresno. Uh, today we have three uh, mayors, actually four, former mayor, three former mayors, two former mayors, one current mayor and an incoming mayor from both parties coming here to celebrate. That I think speaks volumes of this community and this project. I'd like to thank the city of Fresno for providing approximately $11 million in offsite improvements to the site and 4.5 in the construction of neighborhood parks and public transportation that will serve this campus for years to come. Thank you, Mayor Brand, for being an amazing partner. Thank you. I know Mayor Brown's gonna speak a little bit later, but I also wanna thank all of the council members and especially the two that are in are, uh, joined in us today, which is Council Member Arias and Councilwoman Soria. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mayor-elect Dyer, you and I were joking uh, earlier today and I said, uh, you've been left, you've been handed, you're gonna be handed the ball and it's gonna be up to you to help take it to the finish line. And we know we're gonna count um, on you and we're gonna continue this legacy of building a better community together. We look forward to working with you, uh, Mayor-elect Dyer. <laughs> also need to thank the Fresno Council of Governments, which includes so many of the smaller cities in our region, Kerman, so many others, for providing $1.9 million from the new technology grant funds from Transportation Measure C, which will assist with electric vehicles in this project. As California leads the way in zero emission uh, passenger cars and trucks by 2035, we will prepare the workforce to design, build, and repair those vehicles here. And no longer will the Central Valley and West Fresno see some of the dirtiest, most toxic air that is in our country. Our students will be leading this effort here with the largest advanced transportation center this side of the Mississippi. We'll be training those jobs here. And we had a lot of help in Sacramento as well. I wanna thank Assembly Member Jim Patterson and my deepest sincere appreciation to Assembly Member Dr. Joaquin Arambla who helped us secure $2 million from the Distressed Community Funds for educational equipment that'll be used in this facility. Thank you. <laughs> and now to our education partners. For all the faculty at Fresno City College, thank you for working with me in working with our community and providing the education that our community and our employers need. I also wanna thank our educational partners, uh, President Joe Castro, soon to be Chancellor Joe Castro. Thank you. <laughs> President Joseph Jones from Fresno Pacific, thank you for being a thought partner and always being here with us, thank you. Jim Yavino at Fresno County Office of Education, bringing together the superintendents in this area to help make this project a program that all of the county schools can be proud of. And a special thank you to Bob Nelson for always saying yes. We held so many meetings at Edison and at Gaston and they opened up their facilities and said, come on in, we'll help. We wanna partner with you. So thank you for helping all of us to create a college going culture. This region is changing. There will now be a path from K-12 to the community college to the college and the university. It is through your bold efforts that we are truly changing our community to be a college going community. And now I'd like to thank my other educational partner and my boss, 
Dr. Paul Purnell, Chancellor of the State Center Community College District to the podium. Thank you. This is pretty odd, isn't it, to be uh, facing cameras and not all the good people, all the partners that are behind us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just flip back and forth and uh, do that because all of you are uh, super important to me, super, imp super important to this project. At this point in time, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the eloquence of Pastor Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> as, as you were uh, praying, I was thinking, I wish I could talk like that. And, uh, and, and um, uh, I, I appreciate all the ministers and, uh, and the people of faith that are here. Um, it's a great morning. Uh, my, my comments to you are to uh, be safe, uh, wear your mask, social distance, uh, practice good hygiene, but it, at the same time, isn't it really good to be together and to see people face to face here? When I arrived here in 2016 and the board selected me to be the chancellor of this great district, there were many gaps that needed to be filled. There were breaches in our communities throughout our district. Um, fortunately, there were people that had dreams, that had plans, that had worked on this, and I've talked to many of you before uh, about that. And this is the repairing of this breach. We call this a groundbreaking. It is really groundbreaking. Um, by the way, I've given, we have a great sign language interpreter, and I've given her my uh, comments here so that uh, she, she'll be able to help me out in case I get anything wrong, so thank you. Uh, but these breaches needed to be filled. These gaps need to be repaired. And we don't do this just because of the monetary value or because of the great buildings that are going to be here. They're important. But we do this because the human potential needs to have it done. We need to have education facilities. It is our hope for the future that we can change. This is also groundbreaking in that just like we're searching for a vaccine for COVID and we're searching for economic recovery, this is a, this is a vaccine against racism. This is a vaccine against injustice by building this. So after a hundred years, it's time for us to do that. I like the amens. I, that's pretty good. I don't know if I've ever gotten amens before, Pastor Lewis. <laughs> okay. We are, as a district, we are trying to create that college-going culture. And today we're removing a barrier, as you heard before, of transportation. We're not asking students to come to us. Rather, we're bringing education to them, to this community. And it will serve as that economic engine for our community, for prosperity, for better health. We're here to get today in celebration because we all work together. You've heard a lot of these names, and I'm going to mention them again. It deserves mentioning them. And I'll start with Dr. Bill Stewart. He's sitting right here. Dr. Stewart had this dream. When I got here, we sat down. He probably doesn't remember because he was trying to move on and go play golf. But he sat down and he talked to me about this bond. He said, one of the first questions you're going to get when you come here is, do you want to support a bond? And we talked about it, and we absolutely said yes to our board at that time. And we went out, and he, in his retirement, he took on another job, and he helped us pass that bond. 66% of the voters throughout this district said, we're going to build, we're going to repair those gaps that we have. We're going to make education affordable and accessible to everyone. So we did that, $485 million, and the Board of Trustees and their vision uh, and the ballot and the voters made this happen. It paid off. We didn't do it alone. We had community all along the way. So you've already heard them uh, mention uh, Terrence Frazier. He had 13 acres. He gave us half. We bought the other half. Terrence, you deserve to stand up again. Thank you. My good friend, John Shahadi, who has met, met with coffee on several times, and he's educated me about this area and about his dreams and his family. And he talks about how the family, uh, Steve and Jim and Tom, how they get together every week. And they are part of this plan. They, are, they have vision. So it's worth you standing up again, too, and, and taking a bow for their contributions in, in this company 
was uh, another 13 acres, and we bought 13 acres from them. And then you hear about the vision of Sylvester Hall. And you should stand up, Sylvester. It's been a long dream. The city of Fresno, under Mayor Lee Brand, and before that, Ashley Swearingen, had this dream to come out here. This is a part of our community that ha has been wrongly treated for generations, and we're going to repair that. We're going to make that different. The Shahadi family, uh, Sylvester Hall, the development that's going to go to the south of us is going to change the economic climate over here. Thank you, Mayor Brand and all the mayors. And I've had conversations with new mayor Jerry Dyer and Oliver Baines, and, and you find out, you heard from Carol that we had these plans long ago. They're incredibly important for us to fulfill those plans, and I know that Mayor Dyer will, will do that. And he is dedicated to this part of the community having the same opportunity as everyone else, and we're going to do that. We're going to be part of that. There are some other people I'd like to tell stories about. I sat here with Mary Curry, and you've heard her name. She and I, just a couple years ago, sat over at Gaston Elementary when we talked about building out here. And thank you for your work, for your prayers, for making this happen. That kind of advocacy that is relentless is super important. You can stand up if you want as well. She is terrific. I have to tell you a story. When I first got here, Eric Payne called me together, and we sat in a building downtown uh, where his office is and he brought together 19 African-American community members and probably we had talked about a lot of racial issues a lot of issues but number one on that list was building a campus in West Fresno so thank you Eric for bringing those people together and for making that happen I was invited by uh, uh, Pastor uh, Binion and some of his staff. They, they said, we're having a prayer meeting. And I said, that's good. I, I'm not a member of their congregation. We went to their church, and uh, Pastor Binion and uh, Pearl Magnum invited me over there. Little did I know they were praying for this project, for West Fresno, for State Center Community College District, and for Fresno City College. So people have been praying, planning, wanting to make this happen, and we are so proud to be part of all of that happening. Pastor Binion was on our first Citizens Bond Oversight Committee that uh, Bill Stewart put together, and his input was incredible. He opened his church so that we could meet over there. We had those first meetings. We did our planning. This is a democratic kind of vote. We had people vote, and maybe not everyone was pleased, but we certainly counted every comment and every vote that, that came in, and the people that voted were from this community. It wasn't someone else dictating what should go into their community. It's what this community wants and this community needs. I'd also like to thank uh, Debbie Darden. I was talking with her. Debbie, you can stand up. De I, I can't remember who paid Debbie, but one of us, we had uh, breakfast uh, at, uh, at uh, a downtown restaurant, and uh, Debbie's on our Citizens Bond Oversight Committee. She's had those same prayers and dreams to make this happen. And that group of people, Mike McNally, we thank you for being here. They monitor what we do. We, we're careful with every penny that the taxpayer has given us to do this. So the other person I'd like to mention is the Harris Construction, and uh, Richard, I, I met you, and of course I know Mike a lot better, but thank you. Uh, they have the, uh, the construction project, and they are going to build a fabulous facility, and it's going to be uh, under budget, it's going to be on time, and it's going to be an honor to this community, to the whole community here. Uh, I, I have to acknowledge Christine McTarian and uh, George Cummings and uh, Shannon Robertson. They're on our staff. They're the ones that uh, get out and do the hard work and make all of this happen. Thank you. Um, I, I know I'm going on a little bit here, but there are other gaps in our community that I want you to know about. And this is just the beginning. This is the third groundbreaking that we've had. We broke ground over a year ago up at Madeira, and we built a new manufacturing center. We broke ground at uh, Dr. Buckley's here down at Jerry's campus and for a new science building. Did you know that there's a gap out there in Reedley? They have never had a, a, a center for fine and performing arts for people to go to for 90 years, and we are going to build that center for fine and performing arts. <laughs> Up in Madeira, Angel Reyna, our new president out there, they have just become the 116th college. Madeira, Trustee Khan, had never had a, higher institu a public institution of higher education, ever. And, and now they have a... A, a, a community college that's fully accredited. Trustee Khan, Angel Reyna, and then we're going to do another 30-acre project, uh, 30, uh, $25 million on 30 acres 
for the people of Oakhurst, and there's been a gap there. They've been in modulars. Our police and fire academy has been uh, in modulars for 40 years, and our police uh, chiefs and all of our police people know this. They will not be they will not be in modulars anymore. We have 40 acres like this down in southeast Fresno, and we're going to build that facility. It's a gap that's broken, and we're going to repair that breach in our gap in what we're what we're doing here. We also are going to repair a gap at Fresno City, and you're welcome to come to the next groundbreaking on the 20th of October with Dr. Goldsmith and her staff because we are finally going to build an 800. Mayor Brent, you always talk about how in um, uh, at, at that you were uh, had trouble finding parking, I believe it was in the 50s or 60s, we are going to put in 800 parking spaces there. <laughs> and we're going to build a new science building, state of the art, that we've needed for a long time. And that's a $50 million project. At Clovis, one of our great new schools, and uh, uh, President uh, Lori Bennett out there and all of her staff, they don't have space for career and technical education, and they need it. It's been a gap for 25 years. We're going to repair that gap as well. As you can see, we're into repairing gaps and breaches. This has been a breach in our community. It's going to be repaired. My charge to all of you, Mayor, I look forward to being with you. I met with the mayor, new mayor coming in. I met with Oliver Baines. Oliver introduced me to a, a young man uh, named Alfonso Tucker, Dr. Tucker grew up in this neighborhood. He tells me how he lived in the U. The U is known for crime, for violence, for bad health. And he got out of that. He's, he's now a doctor of education. Uh, he was telling me one thing that I think is really important that I want to leave you with from that conversation and from the dreams of Oliver Baines, who lives here in West Fresno, and for the dreams of Dr. Robert Mitchell and Bob Mitchell that educated me on the needs of this particular part of our community that we need to be vigilant. We need to continue to make this happen. The story that uh, he told me is that he went to education. He went to Fresno City College. He then went to Fresno State with Dr. Castro, and that has made a difference in his life. And now he's come out of that. We're going to provide that opportunity for more and more people. But what he said was really important. He said, we need to expect our citizens over here that they can do it and not look on them based on their color, not look on them based where they've come from, but look on all of our citizens based on where they are right now. Jim Patterson was telling me the same story about his son, about how he came to Fresno City College and how now he's got a business and, and how he overcame some obstacles. At, so that's what community college is all about. Uh, I am, I am uh, so thankful to be the chancellor of this district, so honored. I know I've gone on a bit, but there are so many of you that I owe gratitude with uh, to, and I also want you to tell all your stories. I couldn't have gotten enough of all your stories today, and I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. We've got to work together. We're just beginning. Uh, what I'm going to tell you just lastly is that in 1863 or 64, uh, Abraham Lincoln gave every slave that was freed 40 acres and a mule. That would have changed our society forever and ever. They didn't follow through on that. They reversed that executive order with the next president. And they took away that 40 acres and that mule. And those people that were slaves then had to somehow survive. In 1964, our president then, we passed a Civil Rights Act. And we said we won't do that anymore. And that we'd make fair housing. And here we are 60 years later and we didn't fulfill that promise. Let's be committed as a group of people to make sure that this happens, that we fulfill this promise, that this becomes the, the same prosperous, healthy part of our community that it should be and that the people benefit and prosper as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parnell, and you can go on any time with those stories. I think we all love them. So let's give him another round of applause. Dr. Paul Parnell, our chancellor. We talked a little bit about promises and the power of the community, and now it's my distinct pleasure to go off script just a little bit. We're going to change the agenda, but I want to introduce uh, one of the Valley's favorite sons, uh, a friend, a colleague, a mentor, Dr. Joseph Castro, President of Fresno City, excuse me, President of Fresno State, soon to be Chancellor of California State University's Dr. Joseph Castro.
Good morning. Good morning. President Goldsmith gave me a promotion. <laughs> President of Fresno City College. That, that would be you, my friend. And uh, it's such a great honor to be here with all of you today. I've missed seeing you in person uh, throughout this COVID period. And it is indeed a historic day for Fresno City College, for State Center Community College District, for the neighbors here in West Fresno, and most importantly, the future students and families that reside in this area. Those students are the next generation of leaders right here in Fresno, the Valley, California, and beyond. And for several years, I've had the honor to work closely with President Goldsmith, with uh, Chancellor Parnell, with former Chancellor Bill Stewart. And I remember a morning, early in the morning one day, some years ago, when he described for me the history uh, around this idea and his commitment to ensuring that this would come to reality. And I am just so proud to be able to participate in this important historic event. Our strong collaboration between Fresno State and Fresno City College, as well as the other colleges in the State Center Community College District, have yielded incredible benefits for our community and for the Valley. And I'm happy to report that for our, this fall, fall 2020, at Fresno State, we welcomed about 2,800 community college transfer students from up and down the Valley. That's the largest number of transfer students in our 109 year history. And as always, Fresno City College is leading the way. They have sent us 682 new community college transfer students this fall. That is a whopping 43% increase in one year, my friends. So there's some really great things happening in our community for our students. And I know that this campus is gonna make a huge difference in that way. I believe that this new campus will serve as a catalyst to help us all in the endeavor of, of preparing a new generation of leaders. And I can already imagine the faces of our talented students uh, as they come through this campus and get a high quality education and dream big dreams. We know that talent exists in every household throughout the Valley and here throughout West Fresno. And our job as educators is to help unleash and catalyze that talent so that they can become leaders and make a huge difference in our valley and in California. So again, I want to thank you for inviting me to join you today. I'm going to miss all of you uh, as I move on to Long Beach, but my heart will always be here and we will continue to work together and enhance opportunities for all the talented students here in the San Joaquin Valley. Go Rams and go dogs. Thank you again, Dr. Castro, for those wonderful words. And thank you for showing up today out of your busy schedule. We know that uh, you have a lot uh, to do as you transition to help lead our state uh, at the California State University system. So thank you again. Next up on the agenda is someone else who has been leading change and allowing this uh, project to grow from a $10 million project to an $86.5 million project by leveraging funds and partnering with new partners. Uh, someone who is not afraid to partner, our board president, John Leal. Thank you. John? Thank you for joining us this morning. Normally, we would have a very large celebration. It looks pretty large to me at this point. 
But because of COVID-19, we had to keep the crowd size down. However, we are streaming today's ceremony via YouTube and Facebook so that everyone can witness this historic occasion. I'm John Leal, board president of State Center Community College District Trustees. Today is a very special day for, for all of us, but is, it is extra special for me because I am a graduate of Fresno City College and I did transfer to Fresno State. It makes me proud to see a state-of-the-art campus coming to West Fresno. At this time, I would like to introduce my fellow board members who are with us today. Please stand as I call your name. Vice President Annalisa Perea. <laughs> Secretary Magdalena Gomez. <laughs> Trustees Deborah Iqueda. Bobby Kahn and Eric Payne. <laughs> Trustee Richard Kalia sends his congratulations and is sorry that he could not be with us today because of a work commitment. On behalf of the State Center Community College District Board of Trustees, I extend our congratulations to the faculty, staff, students, administrators, and community for bringing us to this day. It really does take a village. As someone who has been on this board since 2012, I know firsthand that a lot of work has gone into getting, it, getting us here. There are many people to thank, but a big thank you goes to our chancellor and his team, former chancellor, Dr. Bill Stewart, and the voters for passing Measure C in 2016. I remember the first time we discussed building a campus in West Fresno. That idea blossomed from a $10 million project to the current $86 million project that we have now. We couldn't be more proud of the facility that is about to be constructed and the lives that it will change. This area is represented by trustee Eric Payne, who has been a big proponent of building a campus in West Fresno and I'd like to call him up to the room to the podium to say a few words. Trustee Payne. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my grandparents, uh, my grandfather was a Southern Baptist preacher, so he liked to do a call and response. So when he say good morning, I say good morning. So good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, I would like to center us today um, and give recognition um, to the land that we're on today, this indigenous land. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to recognize this land that we're on uh, with a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've sat in my seat watching um, much of what's taking place today, and my heart is full. Um, I was born and raised in West Fresno, um, and, and for those who are visitors to this community um, and don't know this community, um, this is a community rich in culture, rich in love, and, and we, like to, uh, 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 we like to eat here. We celebrate um, our cultural traditions. Um, but this community suffers from a lot of institutional neglect, um, a lot of disinvestment, um, and there really is uh, the tale of two cities. Um, but one thing that many leaders like myself are doing is we're working to change that narrative. Um, we are looking, yes, yes. Um, we are looking to push back at institutional racism. We've heard that today. Um, we, we recognize that, that no one person did this alone, but this really did take a village mentality, and it was a Herculean lift. Um, I can remember um, there would be times 
um, in my neighborhood, which is on the other side of Jensen, um, in 2000, in 1998, um, the street behind me was listed as one of the most homicidal streets in America. Um, I can remember um, I was in my first drive-by shooting uh, when I was eight years old, and I was standing in the front yard playing with my brother. Um, I think that um, the courage um, that many of our policymakers have made today um, was nothing short of an act of Congress, Jim. It was nothing short of an act of Congress, TJ. Um, and I think that um, we are all here and we are all celebrating the greatness. Um, I'm looking at Bill Stewart um, and I can remember conversations that we've had um, and that we've shared. Um, if you notice uh, in my seat, I have a sign that says, yes on measure C. Um, and I can remember having those conversations um, and, and saying, you know, you know Bill, um, a, a number of folks in my community have come to me, uh, uh, Jim Aldridge, um, Council Member Baines, um, uh, Gwen Morris, um, Mary Curry, um, and so many others who have said, we really need um, a higher education institution in our community. Um, and, and, and I took the idea and I said, I don't know how to, I was just newly elected, um, I don't know how to make that happen, but I'm gonna learn. Um, and I talked to everybody that knew anything about higher education, about bond financing. Um, I, I talked to everybody um, who felt like they could contribute um, to the success of this project. Um, and I had, a, I, had, I had my naysayers. I had people who doubted um, the, the idea or the notion that this community needed a college campus. And I had some very frank conversations with people who stood me and looked me dead in my eye and said, it will never happen. But let me tell you about the God that I serve. <laughs> Mayor-elect Dyer, I can tell you that I've had some courageous conversations with some folks in this community. Um, I can tell you that I've had some really tough conversations, some long conversations um, when it started out as a seed of $10 million. When I said, that's not enough. My community deserves more and they deserve better. I said, that is not enough. I organized my community, I, I talked to Mayor Swearingen at the time. Um, I said, you know, we, we gotta do something. There, there's, we gotta figure out how we can leverage this stuff. Um, and, and we took a group of folks to Sacramento. Um, we, we gave testimony at the SGC hearing. Um, we talked about um, the, the, the blind eye that had been turned to our community. Um, President Castro, I can tell you that um, Sacramento heard us loud and clear um, that, that they too recognized the investment um, was worthy and, 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 and deserving um, of this community um, to get a state-of-the-art college campus. Um, I told you I, I, I'm the grandson of a Southern Baptist preacher, so um, let me get an amen. This community is deserving. Um, it was in my youth when I witnessed many trailblazers pour their heart and soul into improving West Fresno, um, and we owe them our gratitude. Um, I wanna tell you that, that there are some unsung heroes who are present today um, that, that their names have not been mentioned, um, um, and and I'm indeed grateful for, for, for their work and their legacy. Um, uh, Mr. Keyes, Mr. Dick Keyes, um, Pastor Binion, um, yes, yes. Um, uh, 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 Office Sergeant Mitchell, um, Dr. Mitchell. Um, I mean, there are so many folks. Margarita Rocha, who is here. Let me tell you, I go to that sister anytime I needed something to have a conversation. She would help me brainstorm. Angie Rio, Sam Norman, 
Um, there are so many giants who helped lift this project up today. Um, but I wanna talk about one specifically that's here with me today. Um, and her name is Vice Chancellor Christine McTiernan. Please stand. When they talk about there are so many women who are in the shadows doing the work and getting the work done, um, Vice Chancellor McTarian, um, I, I earnestly think of you and I say thank you. My community thanks you for all of um, the work that you and your team have done to get us here. Um, and I share a deep appreciation uh, for all that you've done and all that you'll continue to do to get us through to the finish line. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, this fight has never stopped. West Fresno residents have remained resilient, committed to improving the quality of life for its, for its citizens, and I'm honored to be a trustee representing Area 2 as State Center Community College District celebrates the birth of this new state-of-the-art campus of Fresno City College, the oldest community college in California, President Goldsmith. <laughs> um, it will be the future hub of many hopes and dreams for generations to come. I think of Washington Union Unified. Um, I think of Gaston Middle School behind me. I think of Edison uh, High School. Students who will be able to, we will be able to bridge um, college career pathways with um, to really create catalytic and generational change um, for, for, for our future. Um, the West Fresno community has been lo looking forward to this day for a very long time. Today represents an important milestone to the solutions for improving West Fresno. I believe this campus will meet the needs of the community because we are not just bringing a campus to this area. Um, and Mayor Lee Brand, I wanna thank you because I can remember times that we've shared conversations uh, when, you were, when you were getting ready for your big run um, and you came to our community at Gaston Middle School and you made a commitment and a promise and I just wanna say, sir, thank you for delivering on this promise. Um, today represents an important milestone, again, the solutions for improving West Fresno. This project was created uh, with many of, of you in mind, um, and, and input came from a number of community engagement um, charrettes. Um, it was a phenomenal community engagement process. Um, we had young people, we had um, our seniors all gathered at Edison High School and Gaston Middle School um, looking at the different designs, coming onto our college campuses. Um, we had our faith community, Pastor Kreiner, uh, Pastor Lewis, Pastor Binion, so many leaders who, who helped um, uh, in, 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 in providing feedback. Um, and one voice that, was, that rang loud in the back of my mind the entire time was Debbie Darden, and I know she's here, um, and she's my appointee on the Bond Oversight Committee. And she's been committed to this. And Debbie, I just, I publicly, I wanna share affirmation and thank you. Um, I see that the future, that there, I see a bright future ahead. West Fresno campus will provide resources that will empower our residents to receive a higher education and the skills that they need for a living wage, for careers. Research says a lot about the benefits of having an education. It's common knowledge that the more you learn, the more you earn. Someone earns more than someone with a high school diploma. The college degree also impacts the longevity of your life. The higher the academic degree, the longer a person's life is. Obtaining that higher education will bring a more interesting and exciting career that will bring satisfaction and pleasure and provide an opportunity for personal and professional growth. The West Fresno campus will, be, will become a, catal a catalyst to the economic vitality of West Fresno, providing economic mobility to one of the most economically disadvantaged areas, not just in this community, but in our country. 
As we celebrate this project, I too would like to thank the voters for passing Measure C, for this initial seed, for this investment. I want to thank all the individuals who've been mentioned today uh, for the West Fresno campus through and getting us to this point. Um, T. Frazier is back there. I want to thank you for your commitment um, and to your partner who has also been a tireless advocate for us at City Hall, Councilwoman Soria, um, and to my brother in crime. Um, we, we get it done together. Um, Council Member Arias, who you'll hear more from later, um, I want to thank you for your commitment um, and your drive um, to, to seeing this project to fruition. Um, and, and not only today, but the work that, that will be required in the future, I want to thank you. To the Shahadis, um, you've stood up enough. I'm not going to ask you to stand. Um, Sylvester Hall, we, we've had a lot, of, a lot of conversations together, and I want to thank you uh, for your commitment and belief in this community um, and for buying back the block, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take more people with a heart like yours to change this neighborhood into the, into the potential and the greatness um, that, that is there. Um, and so with that, I will close um, and I will say thank you all for being here today as we continue to celebrate, as we continue to move this work forward. Um, and to the new generations of leaders who've, 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 who have taken on this baton, um, Tate Hill, you're here today, I wanna thank you. Um, and, and so many others, Tiffany Mangum uh, uh, as well, and so uh, Sabrina Kelly. I mean, there are just so many folks who are working to, to bring this project to fruition because we recognize the value, we recognize the good, um, and we are indeed thankful. Um, God bless. Let's give Eric another round of applause. That was good. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to uh, call to the stage our Mayor Lee Brand and one of our favorite Fresno City College graduates, Mayor Lee Brand. Thank you. Well, good morning. morning. I'll keep my comments short. It's great to be here today to celebrate the construction of this new campus for the State Center Community College District. The district has become an important partner in our efforts to provide opportunity and offer hope to a new generation of students. My administration is committed to improving access to higher education and offering pathways to economic stability for every Fresno student. This new West Fresno campus opens more doors for young people to develop the skills necessary to join Fresno's workforce. We're investing in infrastructure, offsite improvements, and construction of a new neighborhood park thanks to the funding of the transformative climate communities. This new campus is part of the Southwest Pacific Plan and is focused on much needed vocational training that will provide the workforce that will be vital to Fresno's future. I want to thank the Council of Governments for setting aside major C money to help jumpstart this project. Their investment will pay enormous dividends for the community, a community that's been waiting for far too long for someone to step up and say, let's start making a difference. Finally, I want to thank this, uh, the State Center trustees, Chancellor Parnell, Dr. Goldsmith, and the Shahadi family for showing once again the power of collaboration. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, this new West Fresno campus will be the game changer for the community, for the community and the city of Fresno. We are thrilled to partner with the State Center Community College to increase college access, to expand options for students who need it most, and we look forward to, con to a continuing successful partnership. This new campus and the surrounding private property investment represents the biggest investment in Southwest Fresno's history. Well, you, that, that deserves a hand. Yeah. Let me say in closing, these past four years have been one hell of a ride. But 48 years ago, in 1972, I got my AA degree from Fresno City College. I was the first one in my family to get a degree 
And 48 years later, I'm still proud of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Brand. Next up is our former trustee um, and our current council president, Mr. Miguel Arias. Could you please join us, please? I'm gonna try and keep this short because I know uh, Mayor Leg Dyer's hungry, and if you get in the way of him and food, we're all in trouble. Especially since he still carries a weapon around. Um, as the president mentioned, I'm a former trustee of State Center and the current uh, Fresno City Council member for this area, proudly representing West Fresno, and I also get to be the zookeeper of my council during the pandemic, uh, wildfires and a few other things that shake us up this year of 2020 that we're all hoping will move faster than, than it has been. But I wanna start off with just a, simply, a simple reminder. History is written by the victors. Today, we're all the victors of this educational jewel. So I wanna spend a moment telling you about how we got here from my vantage point of a former trustee and a current council member. Six years ago, State Center started the process of developing a half billion dollar bond to build more colleges across the system. State Center was basing that bond based on their history of building colleges, not in educational deserts like we have here, but in suburbs. See, for decades, the college system was used to create sprawl to create new suburb developments. Instead of uplifting neighborhoods like these that were dying for educational opportunities. And I know that some of us, like former Mayor Ashley Swearingen, remember that conversation. Because back then, their plans were to build new colleges furthest away from the core part of the city, furthest away from the people that actually needed the education, the workforce training opportunity. And we took on that systemic, the long history. I remember Ashley Swearingen understanding that that approach had created deinvestment in the areas that needed it the most. At that time, Trustee Payne and I advocated for a campus in West Fresno. And the system, quite frankly, responded with a proposal to to rent 800 square feet of office space in West Fresno and call it a day, a day. We, of course, insisted that that wouldn't be good enough and that we wouldn't settle for educational crumbs offered by the system. And we found some allies in that conversation. Trustee Caglia, our former chancellor, Bill Stewart, um, others like former Mayor Swearingen who understood that that wasn't good enough. 800 square feet of office space in the educational desert, in the poorest zip codes in the country was not gonna satisfy anybody's hunger for upward mobility. So we withheld our support for a bond, Trustee Payne and I, a bond that required five votes to put it on the ballot. And we insisted on ensuring that there was a campus in West Fresno written into the bond we insisted that Fresno City College, the oldest campus in the state, get reinvestment and finally address the parking shortage and math and science shortage. We insisted that we build in Southeast neighborhoods, not in Southeast sprawl. And the system responded and they put that in the bond. So we exchanged our support and we all collectively got the bond passed. Then we understood that a $10 million set aside and a half billion dollar bond wasn't gonna be good enough. But we needed more people helping us. Folks like Terrence Frazier stepped up and put their money where their mouth was and donated land. Land that he could have sold to the system for a huge profit. Folks like the Shahadi stepped up and agreed to jointly develop, plan this area so that we just wouldn't build an educational institution in isolation but we made it part of a thriving neighborhood. 
The state responded with advocates like Ms. Mary Curry, former uh, Mayor Swearingen, Oliver Baines, uh, Assembly Member Joaquin, and they put in their millions of dollars of TCC, TCC funds. Hall the That's right, Sylvester Hall. <laughs> and I remember the, the great lunch that we had in Chef Paul's with Sylvester Hall. Put in That's right. So as, as we write this history, let's be accurate in that history. There are a lot of folks like Sylvester Hall, Terrence Frazier, the Shahadis, the former mayors, the former trustees, the community advocates and leaders all demanded and persisted on not having crumbs that the educational system offered. We wanted the whole pie because that's what people needed and that's what they deserved. And as a result, we got more allies, people like Mayor Lee Brand, who didn't blink when we asked for millions of dollars of offsite improvements. Measure C, who also came in with their own funds. Today is simply um, this campus is not just a campus. It's evidence of an educational facility that demonstrates to many of us that we can change a hundred year old system and have it refocus on its mission to uplift neighborhoods through education and investment instead of abandoning them. It's evidence that electing people that come from your neighborhood and have your lived experiences matters as we see in Trustee Payne. He wasn't gonna give up, no matter what they said about him, no matter what they designed the mailers about him, he was gonna persist. It's evidence that when you give two women the toughest job in the city, they will get it done, even while being screamed at the whole time. So thank you, Vice Chancellor McTarian and President Goldsmith. More importantly for me personally, it's evidence that when you persist and when you collaborate, we can achieve a dream where kids can go from Head Start to college in their own neighborhoods. Because that's what we all deserve. That's what we all strive for. And our kids in West Fresno and in South Fresno, whether you're at City College or the Southeast campus that's under development or the Madero campus, everybody deserves to go from being a toddler to being an adult with a college degree and a vocational degree without having to leave town to see that reinvestment themselves. Thank you all, and I hope we recognize all those who got us here. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council President Miguel Arias for those uh, words to remember. It is now, uh, you know, this has been a long event, but this has been an event decades in the making, so I want to ask for a little bit more time. We have a special uh, video presentation for you uh, from our very own State Chancellor, uh, Mr. Eloy Oakley. So if you could please turn your attention to the monitors in the tent, monitors in the tent, for you who are parked out in the parking area joining us, the large parking screen, we'll now see a video from State Chancellor Eli Oakley. Hi everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't attend this historic event in person, but I wanna extend my congratulations as well as those of the Board of Governors for the California Community Colleges to all of you uh, on this groundbreaking for the West Fresno campus. West Fresno is a high poverty area, tremendous need here. Opening this campus and bringing education to the residents of West Fresno is fulfilling your promise to create a college going culture. Thank you. I had the pleasure of getting to know this community last year when the Chancellor's Office Black and African American Advisory Panel hosted a town hall uh, and a college fair at the West Side Church of God. We heard from students, from business leaders, from faith leaders and educators about the challenges in accessing higher education and the supports needed to succeed. This satellite campus of Fresno City College will serve as a new home to the existing Career and Technology Center as well as other academic courses. 
It will include facilities for automotive technology and automotive collision programs, in addition to constructing an academic building for general education classrooms and student services. The California Community College's Vision for Success, our guiding framework, includes ambitious goals for closing equity gaps, not only across the state, but in regions like yours. With this project, you all are putting that vision into motion. So it gives me great pride to be able to celebrate you, and I speak on behalf of the entire Chancellor's Office team. Thank you for the work that you're doing, and again, congratulations on this important milestone. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry. So as you can see, yeah, let's round of applause. As you can see, there's a lot of eyes on this project and how we're working together. And now I'd like to introduce a short video that features some of our community advocates and leaders who were instrumental. You've heard some of their names, and now we're going to hear from them. So our friends at CMAC, let's queue up our community video, please. This is the beginning point of economic and educational opportunities for tens of thousands of residents in Fresno. My team and I worked really hard for a number of years to make the case to Sacramento that A, Fresno exists. B, it is a place with great opportunity and promise However, C, it has many challenges. So there was just a tremendous amount of advocacy that needed to be done to make sure that we could get on the radar and then justify half of the dollars going to Fresno and the other half being spread around California. My hope is that this is the beginning point of reinvestment in neighborhoods and in a city, in a part of the city that is more than deserving. And my hope is that it serves as a reminder that we as a community, we can fix stuff that has been broken for a long time. I grew up in West Fresno. I'm a product of West Fresno. I went to Lincoln Elementary in Edison. Uh, my parents owned the home there for almost 50 years. And um, yes, I'm, I'm excited that um, we're finally gonna get a campus in West Fresno. When we first moved here, West Fresno had two major grocery stores and numerous small businesses. But what I had seen happen over the years was a total deterioration of anything in West Fresno. And I was on the committee that was uh, researching and working with the uh, TCC to acquire the funds. And so that's how I connected. And we had uh, numerous meetings, large groups, sometimes as many as 200, and we'd get together and discuss what we wanted to see come out of this, since West Fresno was one of the main reasons for the money being allocated to Fresno. So I believe that this college, it will be the heart of Southwest Fresno. When I looked at the land, I looked at what was going on on Southwest Fresno, I see a lack of infrastructure, I see a lack of development, and I see a lack of um, people putting interest in the community. I think the campus is, is going to be a spark that that area needs. When the school goes in, it's going to improve the infrastructure, it's going to improve the surrounding areas, it's going to encourage other businesses. Uh, uh, other education facilities from elementary schools to parks, but it's all gonna start with that school. It allows Fresno City College to offer more programs, such as uh, this really exciting automotive technician program for, for these new electric vehicles. I think it allows um, Fresno City College to expand its geographical pull from <laughs> South Fresno and really West Fresno, but also Southern Fresno County and, and Western Fresno County. There's going to be that emphasis on career technical education. And our office has always been a strong advocate of that. We partner with Fresno City College, with SeaTech High School. Um, and these are giving students uh, that possibility that not only when they finish college, they can go into career. And uh, you know, where, where better to do that than, than right here in our valley and in West Fresno? Many people in West Fresno need a good job, just like the rest of us. This college will allow us to provide career technical education, whether it be through mechanic training, helping with the fire academy, working on a nursing program, to make sure that people in West Fresno will have opportunities to jobs that pay a living wage and help to keep a roof over their head while giving back to our community and helping to improve it as well. 
The new campus would allow us to expand and grow and uh, it'll be three times the size that we have now. We have a lot of classes that are available that could be short term or it could be like a, a seminar or a workshop. And uh, that's, that's how I foresee being able to help the community at large, especially in West Fresno. We really hope that our Advanced Transportation Center will be a beacon of light for that community. We're really looking forward to having community partnership on campus, the opportunity to engage with different agencies and organizations that want to serve West Fresno. This will allow us to open up more programming, more opportunities for students in the area, and looking forward to expansion. My hope for West Fresno is that this dramatic and inclusive change that's about to happen transforms uh, West Fresno into a place where the air is better, uh, where the health is better, where the education level is higher, where people are prosperous, and it's just another neighborhood part of our community, the potential of people to be productive and creative and live uh, peaceful and uh, prosperous lives uh, is possible for everyone in our community. Thank you to our partners at CMAC for putting together that video. Thank you to the community members who came out uh, to speak a little bit about this project. And now it is my wonderful uh, pleasure to invite to this, uh, the podium Miss Lucy Reese, a long-term Valley Re Native resident who supports Fresno and has, who is our Government Relations Director. Miss Lucy. Great video, thank you. Well, to commemorate today's historic event, we've received several proclamations. And with us, we have um, some of the ones who provided those. We have Congressman Jim Costa, Woo! Congressman T.J. Cox, Woo! U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, and we have Representative Christina Solberg with us, uh, Assemblymember Jim Patterson, and Ian Colbert is here with us. We have from Assembly Member Dr. Joaquin Arambula, and we've also received uh, from Senator Ana Caballero, Senator Melissa Hurtado, and Senator Andreas Borges. And we also received something from Super Fresno County Supervisor Brian Pacheco, who's with us. From Mayor Lee Brown and the Fresno City Council, we have President Miguel Arias and Council Member Esmeralda Soria. And if we could get our great photo op right now. Awesome, awesome. Got it? Got it? Okay, you may all take a seat, except I'm gonna ask one of the former Fresno City College Rams, a man who needs no introduction, Congressman Jim Costa. Thank you, thank you very much, Lucy. Uh, good morning, I still believe it's morning. And uh, this is um, a very, very important good day for the people of Fresno, for the people of our valley. Little will be remembered on probably what was said here today, but what we do here today will last for generations to come, and it will make a difference. I think it was uh, so important, uh, Chancellor Parnell and President Goldsmith, along with, uh, with um, Miguel and uh, my friend, our trustee, that you told the story today. Your comments, and you channeled your grandfather well, Trustee Payne, the comments that were made here today by the four of you really told a story of how we got here. And you thank those folks who were the foundation on how we got here. And they deserved that recognition and that credit. Because when good people come together, good things can happen. And sometimes it takes a long time. But today is the beginning of a new day. Mary Curry, you know, I, I think about all of your passion 
for this effort. And it's fitting and appropriate that this new campus be built adjacent to Bud Gaston Middle School here. For those of us who knew Bud Gaston, the first African American educator to become a principal in the 1960s, it, it, it is a reflection of this journey and how hard this journey's been. Because today is all about students and America's future. Today is all about our community and the changes that are taking place in our community. And today is about America and what kind of America we want to have for the future. Thank you. Because it deals with our education. Now, some of us who grew up here on the west side, my case went to St. Alphonsus for my first communion. Remember Mellow Ice Cream? Yeah. My sister used to work there. And Tony the Barber and so many other facets that were part of West Fresno. And as Mary and so many others have noted over the decades the decline of West Fresno, the benign neglect, and some of the pers purposeful changes that took place that disadvantaged West Fresno, and the plea and the prayers that took place from our, our African-American pastors to make a difference and to make a change. And so today we're making that change. My mom told me as a kid, you know, Jim, if you don't have an education, you don't have nothing. And if you get an education, no one will ever, ever take that away from you. You know, we in politics overuse words. One of those words is unique. But the master plan in California envisioned in the 1950s with community colleges the first community college in California being here in Fresno, with our state universities and with our University of California is truly unique. It's unique around the country and therefore unique around the world. Now 116 community colleges, with Madera being the newest community college campus, 20 th educating over 2.2 million students in California. 23 state universities educating with a four-year degree almost a half a million students yearly. And the University of California with nine campuses, the newest one in Merced, educating almost 300,000 students. Think about that. Combined with our community colleges of which, which is truly here at State Center, a incredible reflection of the quality of the education that's provided. With the 23 state universities and the nine universities of California educating three million students, three million students with a higher education, this master plan is unique and therefore a reflection of a state's vision willing to invest in our future. So when we talk about the Teo Two Cities, and we talk about everything north of Shaw and south of Shaw, and we look upon the impacts that this pandemic has created not only around the world but in our country. We look over the last seven months of the havoc that has been uh, rippled across every segment of American life as it relates to our health and our safety and as it relates to the social and economic impacts we understand better today of the impacts that has occurred as it relates to social injustice and the systemic racism that has been, sadly, a part of American history. Now, these aren't new things. We know that they've existed for years. However, this pandemic has pulled off that, that cover in ways that we would not foresee seven months ago. Where social injustice exists in our health care, in our housing, 
and in our education. Let me repeat that. The social injustice that, that exists today, we see impacting Americans throughout our country in ways that we could not have predicted. But we know of the social injustice and the disparity that exists in our health care in America, in our housing, and in our education. So why is today so important? Because it is a strong statement in our attempt to try to deal with the housing, to deal with the health care issues that exist in our community and throughout the country, and to make an investment in the education because, as my mother told me, Jim, without an education, you can't have anything. And today is a commitment to invest in our Valley's education in a profound way. And that's why today is so important. That's why it's a good day. And that's why, with all the wonderful things that have been said here, what is most important is what will take place here for future generations to come. That is what today is all about, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why it is such a good day for the people of our Valley, for the people of California, and for the people of our nation. Go Rams, go Bulldogs, and be bold. Thank you very much. Wow. That was a great speech. Let's give it up again, please, to Congressman Jim Costa. All right, I know you're all excited about hitting those shovels. We have one more speaker, and uh, Sahara, not to put any pressure on you, but you are between us and these shovels. So Sahara will be joining us from the Strategic Growth Council to talk a little bit about the TCC investment. Sahara. Good morning, everyone. It's really hard to go after a congressman, uh, such a passionate speaker. Uh, my name is Sahar Nazmir Zazad. I'm with uh, California Strategic Growth Council, and on behalf of the council, I would like to congratulate West Fresno residents and all of you for achieving this huge milestone. For everyone involved in this project, you all know that this had, didn't happen overnight. The efforts of the community to bring the investment to an area that has been disinvested for a really long time along with the commitment of the State Center Community College District to invest in people that deserve this investment the most have been the main drivers of this success. We are proud that TCC project facilitated the bringing this campus to this part of the town. West Fresno Satellite Campus will bring more than $85 million of investment to this area, and TCC is contributing approximately $60 million to this campus to create a park-like campus for residents of the area. We will plant over 450 trees and sustainable landscape features to provide shading and help reduce urban heat and improve public health. The campus will include extensive bicycle and pedestrian pathways, and the design process was informed by the community engagement to create a welcoming public space in Southwest Fresno. As many of you know, our investment in this campus is part of uh, SGC $66.5 million investment in Fresno. Other TCC funded projects or leverage projects will connect this campus uh, to other parts of Fresno through active transportation and transit. We really hope that people will not drive here, will actually take public transit. The TCC funded car share pro project will coordinate an EV charging station at this campus and a TCC leverage project will install off-site improvements uh, for better accessibility throughout this campus. This investment is sustainable and catalytic. It provides the community with necessary greening and infrastructure improvements while also recognizing the need for workforce training and educational opportunities in the project area. The educational programs will be designed to serve the community needs and will offer technical certificates and degree programs in both traditional and green economy employment right here in West Fresno to support the community for high road jobs. The new satellite campus will also serve as a magnet core to catalyze other investments in the region. I am proud of this investment and excited for the community to access this site in near future. Again, congratulations to Transform Fresno, the State Center Community College District, and many others involved in the success of this project. And thank you for inviting us to this event.
and thank you and the Transformational Climate Change Pro Project for giving us $16.5 million for this project. Let's please give her a round of applause one more time. <clears throat> it is now my distinct pleasure for the moment we've been waiting for the actual groundbreaking. So uh, Executive Director of Governmental Relations Lucy Reese is going to help us line up, as well as Chris Monahan Brimmer from Fresno City College Public Information Officer. If you are some of our remaining uh, elected officials, could you please join us along with our trustees? Please join us uh, at the shovels. We'll do a couple of waves of photos. So if you're thinking, I want to be part of this picture, because of COVID, we will do a few pictures. So we're going to start off with our elected officials and our trustees at the golden shovels.
We just want to remind folks to please get a refreshment before you leave. We've got plenty of waters and Fresno City cookies. So please help yourself before you leave. Thank you.